Stand by for action. Thanks, everybody. My name is David. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy. This time, the Wayback Commentaries for 2015 continues as the underground professor, the Reverend Michael E. Jones, and I discuss teaching tactics and other issues surrounding the way back. You bring up a, a point about doing that, you know, which is, um, you know, I know there are a lot of angry people out there, and we've got darn good reason to be angry, you know, but um, just getting in somebody's face and saying, well, you ought to teach this stuff this way, you jerk, you know, that's not going to get you anywhere. Um, you know, I'm not, I, you know, um, sorry, my, my British friends, you know, but I'm not a huge fan of the Beatles, um, it, on, only because their stuff just got vastly overplayed over here. But, uh, you know, from their song Revolution, you know, um, if, if you go around, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll rephrase it a little bit. You know, if, if, if you go around acting like a dirtbag and yelling in people's faces and being disrespectful, um, you're just going to close their minds against you. Um, and that's why I try to approach some things the way I do, even from a, even from a perspective viewpoint, um, a progressive viewpoint. Um, I try to um, I try to let progressives know that, for instance, what's going on now with the um, with the progressive Muslim control base will not serve them and their needs. You know, it's it's not about uh, it's not so much about how um, about how it's a bad thing for conservatives or libertarians. It's about how it's a bad thing for progressives. Um, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like how – have you ever heard of the guy in, uh, in, in Las Vegas who has the trained cats? He's, he's, he's got, a, he's got a, a, a troop of trained cats that he, that he uh, you know, uh, has a show with on stage in Las Vegas. Have you heard of this guy? Yeah. Weren't they gay and one of them got eaten by one of them? No, 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 no. no, no. You're, thinking of, uh, you're thinking of another couple of guys, and they use tigers. This, this yeah, is Cisco and Ebert band. or something like that? No, no, not them. This, this is a single guy. Um, his daughter helps him in his act, and um, they have they have you know the house cats, domestic cats ah. that uh, that they, that they train to do stuff. Now, his method to get them to do what he wants them to do is he 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 tra- he goes to uh, the shelters and he picks out the cats and he trains them to do the things that they already like to do anyway. Okay, he doesn't. He doesn't try and train to do, and train a, a house cat to do something that it doesn't want to do. Um, you know, if you're not familiar with with cat with house cats, if a cat doesn't want to do something, you're you're going to have a really hard time training it to do that. But if it already likes doing something, then you're halfway there, and that's what he does. He you know he he trains the cats to do the things that 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 they like to do. In other words, he gets on he gets you know on their level as far as well you know okay um, this cat may like to jump from one platform to the next one you know so he trains them to do that and they do it because they like to do it anyway hmm. okay um, and, I'm with and, you you know yeah my father and, always and, said and, though that a cat has uh, staff and dogs have masters oh absolutely yeah <laughs> absolutely. Um, so when you approach someone like an educator, or uh, or just just someone, let's say somebody at work, um, Jiski's told me about you know this guy at work that's this big progressive that's always popping off. Um, if you have somebody at work like that, you know, and you know you, you you can approach them and just say, okay, well, all right, now you're you're for uh, for massive welfare and and okay, you know, you and I can argue over whether or not that's a good thing. But how about the fact that um, President Obama wants to um, import 100,000 um, combat-age men uh, from, from the Middle East? I mean, is that not going to make for less welfare for the indigenous people of the United States, for, uh, for American Indians, and, 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 for, and for black people? You know, is that exactly. is that not going to hurt the people that are already here? In other words, you know, teach it. You got to hit um, them at their level. I always ask yeah. them why all these 
uh, able-bodied men are coming here, and it's too dangerous to bring their wives and children with them, so they leave them in the war zone that they're fleeing. Exactly. Yes, that, that's, <laughs> that's another good way of doing it. I've got a I've got a friend. Uh, you know, he, he he doesn't mind that I call him this, so I'm just going to say it. You know, I got a friend. Uh, you know, that I call Paranoid Paul. Um, he's not very political, but when he thinks about politics, he's 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 fairly well on point. And he calls these these people these guys cowards. You know, he says, yeah. "Well, why why are you know that they're they're young men of fighting age? Why the heck are they leaving the area? You know, um, if if your side is losing, um, find another side to fight on. You know, don't don't go off somewhere else. Um, the the message has to be tailored to the person, and that's something that the left does." Uh, prop very well as you know they've got messages for uh for kids through things like sesame street they've got tons of messages for uh preteens and teens through things like mtv and in and, and popular music um they've got messages for uh you know for for the older people you know in the form of uh some of their people that they trot out uh from Hollywood and you know the old music days, they've got plenty of messages for them, and they've got messages for the uh, the uh, eighteen to uh, to fifty crowd as well, um, with with some of the and television the programs. programs they <laughs> right, yeah. Um, one of the one of their one of their great uh, one of their great uh, means of messaging, uh, as we know, is through television. And uh, I was talking to Kel about this earlier. You know, um, I used to like the show The Big Bang Theory, but it went. It went hard left messaging a long time ago. I can't even watch the show anymore, but yeah. it has a wide appeal to that eighteen to fifty crowd, um, and 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 that's what they do. They have a message for everyone, of almost every interest, uh, and and that those are the kinds of things that we have to develop on on the right when we're teaching people about this stuff. Yeah. Your thoughts? Yeah, they lost me when they started marrying each other and coming out of the closet and pushing. You know, they got famous enough that they could they could change the direction of the show from just being funny to being a political statement, and that lost it. Same with Seth Rogen, you know, is uh, the stuff he's constantly doing and saying, and it's just such idiocy, uh, like the thing about Ben Carson. So I, mm-hmm. I won't see another Seth Rogen movie, and that's too bad because I really liked his stuff. But... Uh, yeah, but you know, the problem is, is we don't seem to have anybody that's offering uh, a difference. And when we do, when you get things uh, that are being offered, like religious movies, uh, they they aren't correct, you know, at, or they're preachy and they're not. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but when you watch Cecil B. DeMille, and he gets a lot of things wrong, but when you watch his Ten Commandments, you don't really feel like you're being preached to. No, you know what God, I mean? No, you feel like you're being yeah. entertained. And I'll right. give you another one real quick, Prof, uh, you know, to your point. I'll give you another one real quick. And that was that mini series the Bible. Now the guy that put that thing together was an Obama supporter. But that's dynamite entertainment. I haven't you seen know, it. Yet. It, it, it. Oh, let, oh, do yourself a favor and uh, and 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 watch it. It's probably on your Netflix or something like that. Oh yeah. I, I have had it a look. on there saved. But but yeah, I, he was I, a he was an Obama supporter. I thought the devil looked like yes. Obama in that thing. Well, that's what people said, you know. But but <laughs> the point is, the point is, I took a look. I I took a, my own look at the ratings um, mm-hmm. for the nights that that thing was on, and it destroyed everything in its path. People loved it, and 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 you know the production values were were first rate. Absolutely, it was very entertaining. And no, again. Just to, as you said, as far as the DeMille movies go, you didn't feel like somebody was preaching at you, and yet the message was was very good. Uh, you know, I would say to anybody, do yourself a favor and uh, and 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 watch that um, if you can manage it. If, heck, even the DVD isn't that exp- expensive. You know, I want to get it for myself because, um, you know, it's exactly the sort of thing you're talking about, Prof. It's it's not preachy. And yet, it is very inspiring. Um, so there you go. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so now, <clears throat> when I was listening to parts one and two, I kept thinking we need to add Bastiat's books, uh, like uh, 
and then you but you you make good on your revisions. So yes. <laughs> You put Bastiat in there in part three. Did I not hear his name? Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You did. You did. Uh, Bastiat, yeah. Locke. Um, you know, and and again, the uh, the precursors to our Bill of Rights. You know, um, you know, I put those in as well. Yes. Because people have people have to know how um, the American Republic started. They have to know right. where all that. Yes. Uh, how and why. And and they have to realize this didn't this wasn't just made out of whole cloth that that this had been this began with well uh, our constitution in a way began with the twelve tables of Roman law um, and and you know the Bill of Rights in a way began with the Magna Carta um, but there's a whole line of stuff that goes all the way down to um, the 17th century that they had to build on in order to create all that right and so. People of the future will need this, so that they just so that they're not saying, "Oh, the great founders of of the American Republic did did sit in Philadelphia in a hot sweaty room and did and, and did poop this greatness out of their rear ends." No, that, that that's <laughs> well, that came out of their it, cats it, behind, evidently, according according to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. but if, but, but if you if they do that. Then there's bound to be somebody sitting on the side going, "Oh, come on, you know nobody's right. that good." But if well, you give exactly. Them, I think I have every you book you listed. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you still talking. I apologize. Well, no, I'm just going to say if you give them the information of how they came to that, then suddenly those framers become human, as human as the people that are going to be setting up the republic at a time that we know not. Right, the next time. Yeah. I agree. Exactly. Um, and, and of course, they'll be flawed too, but hopefully they can do what the founders did. The founders learned uh, from, their, from the mistakes of those in the republic of the past, the republics of the past, and they refined political science. And I would like to think that the next generation that has to do this will learn from the mistakes the founders made. Uh, pay a little more attention to the, like, the anti-federalists and stuff. So we would want to add the anti-federalist papers, uh, Cato's papers, yep. et cetera. Uh, yes, letters to the I, farmer, uh, farmer yep. from the Pennsylvania. You know, I've been doing the B Team series on the founding fathers. I think a lot of their writing we probably ought to tuck in there somewhere. But did oh, you yeah, mention yeah. C.S. Lewis? You know what? You're right. That 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 would be a great one. But but this this ties in right here, Prof. You, you've already, you know, through the talks we've had, you, you've contributed a couple of things, and not not just these writers. C.S. Lewis is great, by the way, you know. But but you've talked about um, you've talked about buying large, you know, uh, like large numbers of of uh, some of these things and passing them out. You've all you've also talked about you know creating little small, as you said, you know, Minuteman pamphlets that you can just hand out that won't be really big things, you know, stuff stuff that you can just kind of carry along in your coat. You know, and and if 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 we do have a repressive government, and you talk to someone, and you and you think you can trust them, you go, hey, here, I got something for you. Here you go. You know, and and it might have one of Cato's letters in it, um, or something like that. This is exactly what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about making individualistic choices, along with the other stuff that I, that uh, that I uh, suggested. You yes. See. Yep. And I figured we might as well include some of the stuff from the ink spots since you included uh, Tolkien. I figured, well, you better balance <laughs> that with with C.S. Lewis. And <laughs> at, uh, and there is there is one book I think that may be instrumental, and that is if someone wants to understand what government is, it would be called the Basic American Government by Carson. And it, I don't even know if it's still in print anymore, but it was I how I learned. What I know, most of what I know came out of that book and the five thousand year leap. Of course. Now, is that a That's, textbook? Yeah. Huh? It's a textbook, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. No, it's no, like I, from I the seventies or it. something, you know. So it's a, uh, it's pre polluted textbooking. Uh, and yeah, and that's and that's what I'm talking about. You know, uh, uh, you know. In other words, it's a good, it's a good old fashioned civics book. Right. You know, the way they used to be, and you mentioned that. I think I, I remember you saying that that we needed to beat the '70s or '60s so that we could get stuff that hasn't been uh, 
modified completely by the Fabian socialists? Right. Yeah. Yes, I I I think I I said you know basically anything before about you know 1970, um, you know certainly anything before the 80s. Right. Some of the stuff in the 70s is okay, but you know it's it's by the 70s you know this is when I went to school and uh, you know it's more or less when you went to school. I think we're about the same age. Things were already starting to be modified, but only in that they were not as complete as they could have been. Um, you know, American history books, uh, Texas history books. You know, of course, you know, I went to school in Texas, and we learned Texas history, boy. Um, <laughs> um, those kinds of things that, um, that that are not, you know, it, it, it's not that things were were uh, were turned around or anything of that nature, but some things just weren't included. I think in order to uh, to make the curriculum uh, move faster or something like that. Um, and who knows? That could have very well been uh, been the beginning of the modification of these things um, over over a few generations. But I'd say certainly yeah. anything before 1970. I think uh, I think I would also add <clears throat> Parson Weems' book on um, oh, what's the title of it? I think I've got a copy of it here. Uh, I do. Let me see if I can find it again. It's on George, uh, the life of Washington by Parson Weems. At, uh, you remember the Parson Weems fable about can't tell a lie, chopping down the cherry tree and all that? He's the right, one that, right. that started that. But I think that book would be great for mm-hmm. an illustration. Of, and we did that book study uh, a couple of years ago on here. But <clears throat> it would be a good way of illustrating how uh, new governments need their myths to promote to promote the – Correct and moral ideologies of it, you know, um, not not out and out lies like like the Soviet Union did to promote what it thought was good about its system, but you know the the morals of 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 not lying, you know, and telling the truth, and that that's why everybody could trust George Washington to do the right thing. The man was a consummate liar and a spy master, uh, and everybody knew this <clears throat> when Parson Weems wrote his book right after the death of Washington, but. People immediately bought into this myth, uh, even though they knew the truth, because of the morals it was teaching. And teachers across this country used that as a textbook, teaching their kids, knowing that they were teaching their kids a lie about George Washington, but that the the message was more important. And it was inculcating our children with morals and ethics, and that's what they were using it for. And I think we should do that. And and I think I would add one other thing, just for fun, because we don't want to bore everybody to death. Uh, in the future when they're trying to save the country. But I think uh, without them knowing it, uh, a surprise series of books, just virtually any Robert A. Heinlein book, uh, Starship oh Troopers, okay. A Door into Summer, you know, those books should all be included. So it'd be fun, but you'll also learn about government through the back door. Well, hang on a second, because I, I was waiting for you to end your your selection there, because I was going to suggest The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, from Robert, ah. by Robert A. Heinlein. Sure. That, that yeah, in, in that one, um, for those who don't know, um, you know, the, well, okay, we're, we're we're doing our science fiction series now that we were going to do. Uh, in the in in that one, uh, it is it is the story of how the you know the moon, which was a, a protectorate of the planet Earth, obviously. Um, broke away from Earth and formed its and formed Luna Free State. It formed its own uh, its own independent country. Um, and there, and there's some very fascinating things in there about uh, the realities of revolution, uh, the mechanics of revolution. And yes, there's some there's some uh, he talks about myths in there as well. Robert A. Heinlein, uh, as far as uh, his persona goes, was kind of a freakazoid, but. He did do some pretty good, um, some pretty good predictive science fiction. There's that book, and yes, as you say, Starship Troopers. I have to tell you, Prof. If I were president, that, that's pretty much exactly how I'd run the military. Um, yeah, textbook. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, and how I would get voting. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. yes, absolutely. Uh, that's that's been a, that's actually been discussed. You know, I yeah. mean, basically, if you don't serve, you don't vote. Um, I'd be okay with that, but I'd also be okay with if uh, 
other than veterans, if you get a paycheck from the government, then you should not be able to vote to increase your paycheck. So I think anybody that's a politician and anybody on welfare should not be allowed to uh, uh, participate in the electoral process. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they, I mean, we could we could kind of refine that a little bit, but um, you know, the uh, a lot of ideas that that Heinlein puts out, some of them are are just flat out freaky, and you know, a few of them a few of them just kind of make you open. Uh, yeah, um, kind of L. Ron uh, Hubberish. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, he does. In, in in the two books we're talking about, the Moon is a Harsh Mistress and the Starship Troopers, you, you do get. You do get a good uh, and an interesting sense of of, of uh, where his head is at regarding regarding government and the future, and it's very pragmatic, um, you know, and 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 it's entertaining. Yeah, uh, don't forget Dora in the summer, right? That's the one where the kids, you know, they go into an alternate uh, planet and they get trapped, so they have to create their own government from scratch. You know, it's kind of a Lord of the Flies no, thing. Actually, that's not a bad one. That's not a bad one. But I think what you're talking about. Uh, could be pebble in the sky. People might have. Oh, to am look I getting them that. confused? It's been a long time, but yeah. you know what? I'm going to go buy them all now, so I can start reading them again on Kindle. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, um, yeah, it's um, you, you're exactly right, though. Um, if if pebble in the sky is is the title, uh, that's that is what happens. Um, the uh, what happens for again? This is for people who don't know. Um, young young people. Uh, who are are about to graduate eh, high school or in some cases college uh, have to pass a uh, have to pass a kind of a survival course. It's kind of a weekend deal, you know. They send them off to a to a planet, you know, that they're not familiar with. And they have to and they have to survive for a weekend, you know. No big deal, right? Um, except something happens with the transportation system that that sent them out there. And they're stuck for a couple of years. They have to form their own government. Um, they have to uh, they have to uh, form associations, alliances, stuff like that. And um, yes, that that's a that's a great book you thought of because um, in there um, you have uh, you have you things could have gone either way. I mean, they could yeah. have all turned into, uh, you know, they, they could have turned into a bunch of, you know, roving gangs and stuff like that. But what they wound up doing was setting up a, uh, was setting up an actual, an actual town with, uh, with law enforcement okay. and, uh, and manufacturing. Well, the way uh, you should so, word it is that they set up civilized <clears throat> society with a social compact as opposed to might makes right. Yes. I'm holding up my Second Amendment coin. For those of you on Periscope can see it, it's copper. It's really cool looking, I think. Yep. And it's a uh, $2 copper coin. <laughs> I like these. For those of you who want species in the future to, uh, oops, forget to turn on ag, to, to um, protect yourself so you can buy things. I always have this. Every show I have this. I'm usually nervously fondling it while I'm thinking. Gives my hands something to do and keeps them out of my nose. All right, Harris here. We got <laughs> we got everybody in the back here. So there's some boys out in my field playing football. And uh, here you go, Harris. Yeah. And so that's why those kids were barking earlier. The dogs were barking earlier. All right. So we're talking with Agador, the un- unpleasant blind guy. Uh, over the way back, a series we've been doing. And we're talking about modern books. And one of the things I think, instead of saying what I would include, one of the things I would not include are any of the books by the exalted one Rush Limbaugh or Glenn Beck or uh, even, um, what's his name, the other one, uh, Mark Levin. Uh, really? I've read all their books, and none of them would I want to put into a package to save the country because okay. of the way they're designed and what they talk about. What do you think? So you would not, you would not include, um, you know. Now, now I've, I've got to say, you know, I, I have my issues with Glenn Beck, uh, and, and, and <laughs> that's well known. Um, you know, but I have to say that I have learned a couple of historical things from him, like you know what initiated. The uh, the wounded knee massacre, and and I have to say that I'm very appreciative of that, you know. But I have uh, not actually s- sat down and read any of of his books, 
So, um, you know, um, I would, you know, I would re- appreciate knowing why you wouldn't want to put uh, any of any of his books or the others in, just, you know, for my own edification and, and for that of the listeners. Well, I'll tell you, here, here's why. What do they focus on? Uh, Limbaugh's books, like See, I Told You So and stuff, are things that he talked about on the radio show, but mostly they point out the false progressivism and liberalism. And if we're at the point where we're having to restore a constitution uh, that's dead and in a progressive Muslim-type uh, country, then I don't think that argument needs to be made anymore. I think the argument needs to be made of why a republic, not why everybody else is wrong. Um, and a lot of these end up having political statements that they put in uh, that are are just that. And they're politics. They're not they're not um, what I well I have a definition I call creative politics and innuendo politics and and that they fall into mostly that. Now creative politics today at the time of the revolution may very well have fallen into innuendo politics. I mean things like Thomas Paine, uh right. the Declaration of Independence, they were all innuendo politics, but they also served another point and they were creative. Uh, they were creating a new world order, and that's what they were trying to do, uh, something that had not been done before, a republic that had never existed in history. And they were very successful at what they did, creating a more perfect union, not a perfect one. But when I look at these things that they write, I don't see uh, anything in it that is a concept that we need to rebuild and that the entire book would be worth having. You know, in order to do one of these, I think the entire concept of the book must run through. And, and so, you know, because books aren't cheap uh, and they're big and cumbersome. And, right. you know, and so uh, you would want them to be, you know, worth the effort of, of hauling around and secreting and hiding and reading and memorizing and teaching. So, I don't think yeah. that we need that. Now, yeah, there's that one book. I don't remember. I've got it up here in the shelf that he does. As an Indian, I already knew about uh, Wounded Knee, but the the concepts of the book were that government does a lot more wrong than we give it credit for, and, and yeah, yeah, we get that. Uh, but mm-hmm. I don't know is that I would stick that in. That's it for this time. Next time. The Wayback Commentaries 2015 continues with The Underground Professor. Agador and The Underground Professor, both sitting high atop a double rainbow, gaily swinging our feet over the hermitage of North Texas's liberal conservative studies. This has been copyrighted in the year of your Lord 2015, via Concarni for the Agadorable fans and via Contoodles for mine. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2015, Anno Domini.